In this tutorial, I'm going to go through two workflows for connecting your Grasshopper definitions into Revit using the Conveyor Version 2 Toolkit. The first example involves working externally of Revit in a standard Rhino work session. And within this Rhino model, I'm going to activate the Grasshopper plugin. And what we can see is that we have a definition here that is generating some diagonal louver-like objects across the surface. So I've, I've referenced the surface into Grasshopper. I'm using the contour command and I'm extruding um, the resultant lines, um, generating some um, polyline boundaries. And then I'm going to use those polylines to drive the creation of uh, an adaptive component. So everything that you see in this sort of white um, area of the definition is standard uh, grasshopper definition stuff. Um, this component here is a node that allows me to define the adaptive component class. Uh, you can see that I'm taking the polyline and I'm assigning it a adaptive component type. And then this uh, node over here is the conveyor write component which will author an external Rhino 3DM file that can be imported into Revit. So this entire workflow sits externally of the Revit environment. Um, you can see that by clicking this toggle to true, it will author a 3DM file um, that I could you know, give to a colleague or use myself to import. So if I jump over into Revit, um, you see that I have a number of different geometries that have already been imported in, uh, floors and, and exterior skin. And what I want to do is I want to generate those diagonal louvers across this surface here. So the way I can do that is under the Proving Ground tab, um, I can activate the Rhino Conveyor uh, add-in. And what this will do is will present me with this interface for importing objects in. You can see I have an itemized list of objects here from the previous imports. Um, See, I've got you know, some level objects there. What I want to do is I want to direct this add-in to pick up the Louver um, export, um, which is also a 3DM file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open there. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me this um, listing of elements that represent those adaptive components that were sliced out of the facade. So what I can do here is simply hit Load Rhino Objects. And you'll say that I've got 49 total elements uh, that will be loaded into Revit. Do you want to continue? You can hit yes. And you can see that it's going through a process now of converting the geometry into a set of adaptive components. And we have a progress bar. You can see that these elements are being uh, checked off. Um, they're being created in the scene. And what we'll see at the very end here are the adaptive families um, having been placed now in their respective locations. So this approach um, involves kind of setting up the workflow where you're working externally of Revit. Um, you don't need to have um, even Revit on your computer to define this workflow. You can um, just be working in Grasshopper and Rhino as you would normally, and then you're saving these uh, conveyor compatible Rhino 3DM files that can then be imported. Right. So that's one version of this workflow, um, kind of the uh, Rhino on the outside approach. Now what I want to do next is show the Rhino inside approach that can use the same Grasshopper graph um, but accessed through the Rhino inside plugin. So the, the same graph can work in, the, in, in two different modes of operating. Um, so to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select all these instances here. Um, and I'm going to recreate them using that second workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and make visible in view and just delete those out. I'm going to jump over into this model here. I'm going to make sure I um, set that to false. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and save that test. I'm going to exit out of there. And I can go ahead and save this file as well. And close that down. So now I have Rhino completely closed. And what I'm going to do now in Revit is access that same definition logic through Rhino inside. So the way to access Rhino inside, when you have Rhino inside um, Revit installed, um, this exposes the ability to launch Rhino from inside of Revit. Under the add-ins tab, you can see that I have uh, the Rhino command, which will then give me this um, interface here for um, accessing different components of Rhino. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Rhino command here, and that's going to access uh, Rhino. So this is Rhino launching through 
uh, Revit. Um, so Rhino is in effect acting as a plugin. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that um, workshop tower that I had open before. I'm hit open. And so there's my, my tower. And I can now launch Grasshopper within Rhino. Um, so that's going to give me the, the Grasshopper interface. So you can kind of see this like stacking of programs, right? I've got Revit. Um, I've got um, Rhino and Grasshopper. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that same definition I had before, the Louver test definition. And there it is here. So the exact same definition um, that I had loading and saving externally of Revit. Um, I'm now in the inside environment. And what this definition is going to do is it is now detected that I am running Rhino and Grasshopper through Rhino inside Revit. And what I can do here is simply click this toggle to true. And Rhino is going to go through that process of bringing the adaptive components in automatically. So it's going to bypass the need to do a separate import process um, and instead is going to directly import everything into the uh, Revit environment from Grasshopper um, with no intermediary steps. So there's this now opportunity to have a direct integration uh, with Grasshopper. Now, what's kind of cool about this and the main reason why this was developed uh, was that we wanted our conveyor toolkit to have compatibility with the Grasshopper uh, components that come with Rhino inside Revit. So when you install Rhino inside Revit, it installs a set of um, Revit components. So you can actually go to um, the, the Revit tab. Here's the Proving Ground tab, which has the conveyor tools here. Um, and here is the Revit tab, which has all of the uh, Rhino inside Revit components. So you can kind of build up your own custom uh, workflow using these components. Um, and what we wanted to do here was with the conveyor tools, um, we saw an opportunity to say, okay, well, we can introduce our conveyor logic into Grasshopper and expose that, but then we can also create connections into the Rhino inside components. So you can see that this right conveyor tool produces a Revit IDs list, um, and those Revit IDs can be used um, with these other objects here. So what I can do now with the uh, conveyor components is I can start to integrate them in with the Rhino inside components because I have these Revit IDs. And I'm going to go, for example, to this element category of objects under the Revit tab, and I'm going to find the query element um, component, which allows me to pull up the element objects for um, all the objects I just created here using the Revit ID. So if I pass in my Revit IDs here, um, what we're going to see is that the Rhino inside components are now giving me access to those objects. So there we have our, our Revit uh, component, Louver for point. And if I wanted to then start to do different things with it, um, like get the element parameters, for example, um, I have my element input here. Here's my parameter list. I'm going to pass my elements in here. And this is going to now query all of those elements. And it's going to produce the keys and the values for those um, for those elements. So here we have, uh, you can find the parameter value for the, the lining thickness or the, the area and length and those types of things. So the, these parameter objects can now be, can be used downstream. So this workflow here, when running the conveyor components through Rhino inside Revit, actually starts to help you extend um, conveyor and also enhance the um, uh, Rhino inside Revit experience because they can now have a connection and, and be intertwined. So that's the overview of these workflows. You can see that we did two workflows. We did the example of importing objects in using the um, conveyor add-in uh, for, for Revit, um, the dockable window that allows us to import. And we can also go through the process of bringing over objects through Rhino inside Revit. And our definitions that we write in both contexts will work in either case. So hopefully this is helpful in um, helping you strategize different workflows using Grasshopper.